Welcome to the video on second grade measurement support. The intention of this video is to give teachers content support with the second grade measurement standards related to linear measurement. We will not be discussing the graphing time or money measurement standards at this time. Each year the end of grade tests indicate that measurement is a weak area for Cumberland County Schools. In order to support teachers in grades 3 through 5 in preparing our students for their measurement standards, let's take a brief look at the progression of measurement standards leading into third grade. Again, here we're only going to look at the linear measurement standards. In first grade, we're going to work primarily with non-standard units. We are going to measure or order objects by length, compare two objects using a third object, and then measure using non-standard units. In second grade, we're going to start focusing on standard units, so inches, feet, centimeters, meters. We are going to measure using appropriate tools, and students will self-select those tools. We'll measure objects twice using different sized units, and discuss what happens when we measure using different sized units. For example, what happens when you measure your desk in feet versus in inches. Prior to measuring, we will estimate lengths in inches, feet, centimeters, and meters. And then after measuring, we're going to determine how much longer one object is than another. So that builds in some computation, some subtraction there. We will also solve word problems involving lengths and use symbols for unknowns. And then we would record measurement data on a line plot using whole numbers. So the nearest whole inch, the nearest whole foot. In third grade, they're also going to generate measurement data and record it on a line plot, but here they're going to measure it to the nearest half or quarter. So for example, the nearest half inch or quarter inch. While it appears that measurement is very light in third grade, this is not the case. The major components of the third grade measurement relate to area and perimeter. So our linear measurement standards in first and second grade are the prerequisites for the area and perimeter standards. In Cumberland County Schools, weeks one through three of the second quarter focus on basic measurement skills, those skills highlighted in yellow on your screen. During weeks four through six of the second quarter, Cumberland County students focus more on problem solving and analyzing measurement data. These standards are highlighted in orange on your screen. Over the next few slides, we will look at activities for both weeks one through three and uh, four through six. There are four standards in weeks one through three. This does not mean that we teach one standard per week or two standards per week. Instead, try to see how all four standards can be integrated or built into a single lesson. For example, if students were asked to trace and measure their bodies, start by asking students to select an appropriate tool. Then students use units from that tool to estimate their height and measure their height. Then students can compare their heights with each other. Lastly, students would select a different unit and predict what would happen when measuring using the new unit. Cumberland County teachers, there are several great measurement activities that are still available in our old targeted objective books. If you do not have access to these books, I put links in the comments section below this video. You have to be a Cumberland County teacher to access the links, but if you're having trouble accessing them, please contact me and I'll help you out. This first video, or this first activity, is called Are You a Square? It asks that students measure their height and compare it to their arm span or their wingspan. This activity could easily incorporate several of the standards from weeks one through three by having students first select the measurement tool and estimate their measures. For those students who are a tall or wide rectangle, they could then find the difference between the lengths of their height versus wingspan. This is another great tool from the Targeted Objective books. There are tons of these cards and also directions for using these cards in the book. Um, although there's directions for using these book cards, I like to use them as chat and write cards. So at the end of a lesson or as a math station, students can select a card, um, think about the answer, and then chat about it with a friend, and then write their response in their journal. This way students have three times to reflect on the question. One of the hardest concepts for second graders to understand is that the bigger the unit, the fewer of those units are needed to measure an object and vice versa. To help teach this concept, Stuart J. Murphy has written a great book called Super Sandcastle Saturday. In this book, the lifeguard has a series of contests to see who could build the tallest sandcastle, the deepest hole, and so on. 
Each time the kids use different sized units to measure though. So for example here you could see that Sarah measured her sandcastle and said it's three shovels tall. Well, Juan measured his, and his was only two shovels tall. However, his shovels were a different unit size or a different size than Sarah's, and his sandcastle is actually taller. This would lead to a great conversation with your students and really help students see that different sized units will lead to um, a different measure. LearnZillion also has some great videos on uh, measuring objects twice using different units and discussing what happens. Uh, LearnZillion is a great tool to check out, but remember teachers, this can't replace your teaching. Um, I would use LearnZillion as a tool for myself to watch the video ahead of time, and then I may or may not show the video to kids. It might just give me the language that I'm going to use with my students. As students learn to accurately use standard measuring tools, it may be helpful to give them practice with broken rulers. These allow students to count the inches or the spaces between the numbers rather than just look at the last number. Um, it will also be helpful to make the connection between a ruler and a number line at this point. Remind students that when using a number line, we also call, count the spaces or jumps, not just look at the end number. Copies of broken rulers are in the 2009 Targeted Objectives book in the link below this video. Here's another skill builder activity for students. In this game, students are asked to roll a die and measure the given number of centimeters along the jagged line. The first student to measure the entire line wins. This skill builder helps students practice moving the ruler to measure the objects or the line correctly, rather than just keeping the ruler straight and measuring this as nine centimeters. This game, along with several other games, can be found again in the Targeted Objectives book in the link below the video. There are two standards in weeks four through six of the second quarter for Cumberland County's pacing. This does not mean that we teach each standard for a week and a half. You can teach each standard in isolation, but there's going to be some really great opportunities to integrate these two standards. For example, after students collect and record data on a line plot, discuss observations. Then, ask students to solve word problems using that measurement data. The last portion of this video will discuss standard 2MD9 because there seems to be many misconceptions about line plots. When I did a Google image search for standard 2MD9, the entire screen displayed images of incorrect activities and worksheets for teaching this standard. A line plot uses a number line to organize data, and you can see here the number line in red. Because it is a number line with numbers on it, we can only collect numeric data on a number line. So we would not collect data about favorite colors or favorite flavors of ice cream. In second grade, standard MD9 specifies that we are only collecting numeric data regarding the lengths of objects. In second grade, we're going to collect length data to the nearest whole number, so for example, the nearest whole inch or the nearest whole foot. In third grade, we collect measurement data involving fractions of units, in, for example, fractions of an inch. As you can see on your screen, this activity is an appropriate example of a second grade line plot activity. This activity also has really good questions to ask um, your second grade students after you've analyzed or after you've collected the data and you're analyzing the data. At this second grade level, we would not ask questions about range, median, mode, and so on. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video on the second grade measurement standards. Have a great day.